Hi, I'm here with John Burns of the John Maxwell team uh, here today to kind of cover the disk profile and how to leverage it and build your insurance agency with it. Hey, John. Hey, Keith. Thanks for having me on and uh, I'm excited to cover the disk. Uh, you and I have utilized this quite a bit over the years, uh, building a couple teams and have both found it to be uh, very effective in both our respective teams. Absolutely. So, so John, just for people that don't know what the disk profile is, can you kind of give us a brief overview? Yeah, so this particular profile is geared towards pretty much uh, organizations and business. So it's purely focused on that. It's not focused on a lot of other outside noise. It's just truly focused on your business. And basically, whenever you have a team of individuals working together, most of us have had the experience that it takes time to get to know who your team is, what they're about, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Uh, this literally probably cuts that time down to one one hundredth. Uh, as far as uh, getting your team together, getting them operating as a team, and getting your team members uh, positioned in the right right places. Uh, I think of your first team we built, and upon doing the disc with each of your team members, realized that two people were in the wrong positions. And by switching those two people, it, it was very effective on your team, but it helps with identifying your team's strengths, individual strengths, their blind spots, how they like to be communicated with, uh, what's the most effective communication styles, uh, which also helps within a team environment because everybody likes to be communicated with differently. Uh, thank you for that shoot. Yeah, it, when we leveraged it to build our agency, it, it turned it into a topper club or those not, not, not with farmers, uh, an achievement club agency. So kind of let's, let's just jump right into it uh, with the first letter there on the screen, uh, C, it's B. Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, um, that's pretty much all Keith has is high D. Uh, <laughs> the rest of his profile uh, drops into the abyss of personality. Uh, so Keith is a very high D. And if you look on the left side, uh, he's confident. Um, assertive or aggressive, challenges the status quo, seems to like control, dislikes routine. If you go to the right, these are some of the best, most effective ways to interact and communicate with Keith. Be direct and brief, stay in the big picture. Don't try and share all the details. For de decision, provide them with options, maintain your focus on results, not processes. And I usually, uh, since the beginning of Keith and I connecting a few years back, it's usually the five minute or less rule. Uh, they don't want a 25 minute dissertation on something that you could wrap up in five minutes or less. So uh, but that's, a, that's a good example. Um, when it comes to sales, generally the high I or high DI combos are usually gonna make your best salespeople. Um, the reason being they're talkative, optimistic, they encourage others, they're fun to be around, they're very social, and everybody could identify an I almost immediately because when you come in together after a weekend, they literally tell you everything from their barbecue to how their dog's doing to what happened at the park. Um, and so, yes, uh, your S, high S's, they, they, make up about 70 plus percent of our population. So these are uh, more dominant within our population. Uh, they're loyal, reliable, good listener, voids confrontation, uh, mediator. Um, they make really great uh, support staff, you know, as far as that goes. Uh, your high C's are really critical within any agency because they're kind of the the backbone of organization. They're very analytical, they're organized and structured. They like files, they like things to all line up. <clears throat> they work well with the schedule. Generally, they prefer to not be amongst people all the time. And uh, more times than not, they're more quiet and reserved. 
but they can absolutely keep your agency on track on all the uh, administrative stuff, you know, as far as that goes. No, and, and usually somebody's not one one letter, yeah. from what I understand. So what, what company, I think you said a combination of I and D for, for most sales positions? Yeah, so generally the your top salespeople are going to be either high ID or high DI, but they're going to be very close um, in reference. Um, very high eyes do make good salespeople. However, you have to have a really organized support system um, beneath them because they're great with clients. They're they're great with getting out there. They're great with the interacting with the community, but as far as the details and the structuring of different things, um, that can that can be a place where they tend to have things fall through the cracks. Um, so, but the DI, uh, if you can get a good DI in your organization, they're 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 going to knock it out of the park. That sounds good good to look for. And it's I know you said S is kind of the main majority of what people kind of score out on so would a customer service rep kind of be the position for them the good with people good loyal reliable yeah yeah so i i really encourage uh you know if if you're looking for a good customer service representative um any combination of cs being more dominant is going to get you what you need as far as that goes. I mean, you do want to have someone that's somewhat outgoing and has some communication. So if you can get some I in there too, that would be ideal. But the S is going to be just, um, I, I kind of reference them as the worker bees. And if they got some C, it's the worker bees that are well organized. And uh, so it's, it's a good combination as far as CSR, things of that nature. Well, and to kind of put a, put a bow on it, I know this usually comes with three graphs. Usually, if I'm getting this right, you can correct me, John. Self, kind of the core, or, or self, or, or yeah, yeah, sorry, I kind of me told you I messed this up. The You're outer perception fine. of it, the core self, and then the uh, outer, uh, there, there you go. You, you have it pulled up there. Yeah. Perceived self. So can you kind of tell me when these three graphs are similar and when they're different, what that means for somebody? So generally when all three graphs are similar, uh, that means the person's well-grounded and, and within their, uh, they're very comfortable with what they're doing. Um, the center graph, this is what I call your core, uh, it's your private self. So whenever, you get put under pressure or, or, or things get tense. This tends to be where your personality goes to. And the first graph here, this is how people in the public workplace, people around you, this is how they view your personality. And then if you look at the last graph here, this is how you feel the public views your personality. Um, but this, this graph here in the middle is really your, this is your core. This is where when things get tense or under pressure, this is immediately where your personality is going to usually uh, revert to. Well, those, those that, that's pretty cool to see too. Well, and it's, it's great too, because if you get down, there's a, there's a certain degree of fluff in here, but this is, probably my favorite part of the disc when you're working with a team um, because you can identify each individual uh, like this this individual's greatest fear is being taken advantage of it tells you how to communicate with them it tells you what not to do when you communicate it kind of tells you what Keith's going to do when he's analyzing information Tells the motivational characteristics of that individual. Shows the value to the group that they bring. The, po uh, the positive characteristics that they bring to the team. <clears throat> but it also shows some areas for that individual to work on uh, to become an even better team member. So take example for here, strive to be an active listener. Um, 
So, but it's really beneficial because we just assume that one communication style covers all, but it really doesn't. And I think you're the best example of that, Keith, and your previous team. Uh, you had a specific communication style with each one of them that, that appealed to what their personality is like. Um, one person wanted to have a cup of coffee with you once a week. Uh, the other person wanted to tell you about their weekend and just just very endearing, just kind of get getting more into how's your family and stuff like that. And then the third person uh, literally wanted it to be uh, two minutes or less and didn't really care about your weekend or anything else. But you can imagine with the, the last person that if you went into a 20 minute thing of noise, all he would have been thinking about was you've just cost me 20 minutes of getting stuff organized for the day. So. Oh, absolutely. Well, and we'll, we'll uh, stop here, but uh, yeah, put, put kind of putting a ribbon on it. It really has changed. It changed my agency when I was uh, operating my agency. I know you're using it on yours right now. And then on top of it, we're helping the district up here in Minnesota. So John, we really appreciate you kind of sharing all that information today. And any, any last kind of thoughts on, on this profile and kind of. Well, it's, it's, it's a really strong leveraging tool for anybody in sales, because if they really learn to identify the disc profiles of people, it can help them pivot their communication. And this is especially important in sales because you need to know who your audience is and everybody's gonna receive communication differently. And you'll be able to tell immediately, this person's a high D, keep it brief to the point, stay in the solution. They don't want a 20 minute syllabus on whatever product that you're quoting them or presenting to them. The other thing is what's great about this report is it takes less than 10 minutes to do but it pumps out a 30 page comprehensive report on the other end. So yeah, it's, it's a really powerful tool. Uh, it's useful. Well, shoot. Thank, thank you for going through it today with us and hope, hope some people can uh, glean some value out of it. Thank you, John. Oh, I appreciate you having me on. Have a great day.